far as to say you're the only ones for the job. The only ones for the job? Huh. If our help is really that important, it's probably some Archon class commission, right? <laughs> the Adventurous Guild doesn't employ that kind of classification system. In fact, this commission is also probably not nearly as intimidating as what you're expecting. All it asks us to do is to find a missing person. Huh? Then why did you say we were the only ones for the job? I came across this commission while reviewing our backlog not too long ago. It seems simple, but our records indicate that over a dozen successive efforts to complete it have all ended in failure, despite attempts by several accomplished and renowned adventurers. With the reputation of the Adventurers Guild and the performance of the Sumeru branch at stake, it's in our best interest to assign this commission to the adventurer with the highest completion rate over the past few years. Well, that's us for sure! <laughs> All I'm asking is for you to give it your best shot. If it proves to be beyond your capabilities as well, I'll talk to the commissioner about cancelling the commission. Okay, so who are we looking for? And what is it about this commission that's made it so hard to complete? This commission was jointly issued by the residents of Vimara Village. They say one of their own villagers has gone missing. But the problem is, they don't know the missing person's name. They can only provide information about his general appearance. Uh, they're all from the same village, but they don't even know his name? Hmm. If so many adventurers have failed to complete this commission, maybe this missing villager doesn't exist at all. Could it be some sort of a prank or something? Unlikely. Several villagers came by to issue the commission, and judging by their appearance and tone of voice, they seemed incredibly sincere. It certainly didn't seem like a joke to them. Besides, putting up a commission requires a processing fee. There aren't many upsides to a prank that costs Mora to carry out. In any case, it would probably be best to go to Vimara Village and ask around first. The Adventurers Guild does have some information on hand, but I would say anything you can learn directly from the villagers would be far more reliable. The best way to avoid misdirection is to go to the source. Alright then, let's go! Paimon's starting to get really curious about this whole thing. as challenging as Catherine made it out to be, we're gonna need to carry out a very detailed investigation. Hello there. You looking to buy something? I do business in this area. Oh, no, no. We're adventurers. Catherine sent us to look into a commission here in Vermara Village. Ah, so you're here about that, then. Ah, you're not the first, that's for sure. We've certainly made a lot of trouble for you all. To be honest, we aren't holding out much hope. Many adventurers have made their way out here, confident they'd be able to help us, only to leave soon after with nothing to show for their efforts. We've pretty much had it up to here in questions, and the area around the village has practically been overturned in search of clues. But no one has been able to make any headway. So, this person we're looking for, what's his name? Where did he live? Does he have any relatives? Uh, I, I don't know. I really have no clue. Okay. Guess you are really sick of answering questions. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sound short with you. I was actually just giving you my answer to your questions. I know it may seem like we don't have anything to offer by way of information, but I promise you, we all have a very strong impression of him. When you live in the same village as someone, you develop a lot of memories together, you know? We just don't know the specifics. Uh, maybe we did at one point, but that information is long gone by now. A at least that's what everyone in the village seems to think. We've all exchanged what we know, and that was the only logical conclusion. All right. Specifics aside, then, what kind of person was he? Young guy. In his early 20s, probably. Incredibly kind sort of person. Always willing to lend a helping hand. I'd chat with him when I didn't have any customers. I even saw him stick out his neck for others on more than one occasion. <laughs> a 
Very interesting guy, that one. Now that you've started talking about him, you don't seem nearly as down in the dumps as you did before. Seems like he left a pretty good impression on you. But of course, everyone in the village is pretty fond of him. We wouldn't have issued that commission otherwise. There aren't many young people like him nowadays, so genuine and pure. To think that he just up and disappeared one day, I just hope nothing bad happened. Could he have just moved away without telling anyone? No, he's not the type to leave without saying goodbye. And anyway, moving away without being seen by a single person in the village? There's no way he would have been able to manage that. Huh. All right, thanks for the information. We're gonna go ask around some more. It's that guests I hear. Hi, Grandpa Amadea. We're here to help you look for the guy that's gone missing. Ah, so that's what brings you to these parts. Coming all this way for our sake. That's so very kind of you. With your help, I trust that young man's case is in good hands. Could you tell us a bit about him? Of course. I'm happy to help any way I can. With my failing eyesight, I'm afraid I can't offer much about his appearance. But I do remember hearing the sound of his voice. Not recently, of course. That loss has left me feeling quite empty. I don't think his parents are still living in the village. But somehow he never seemed lonely. In fact, he was usually the one offering companionship to others. He would often take time to visit the elderly or play with the orphans in the village. And whenever someone had something on their mind, he was there to listen with open ears. He always knew just what to say. As the village chief, I owe him many thanks. Helping villagers navigate difficult moments in their lives should have been one of my responsibilities. But he was often the one rising to the occasion. Wow. He seems like such a nice and gentle person. No wonder his disappearance affected you all so much. But, um, you wouldn't happen to know any details about his name, address, or family situation, right? <sighs> I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just can't remember. No matter how you look at it, I should know those things. But for some reason, no matter how hard I try to remember, the information just doesn't come. Perhaps my age really has caught up with me this time. Ah, uh, it's okay. There's no need to force yourself to try and remember. We'll figure something out. Well, Traveler, what do you think? I don't think so, too. Like, the name thing. It's so weird that no one remembers his name. And nobody has been able to tell us anything about his family or where he lived. It's like this guy's been erased from reality or something. Wait, so you're saying it's not that he's been erased, necessarily, but more like he never existed to begin with? Okay, Paimon's gonna need some time to process that one. Someone who only exists in people's memories? You two are the adventurers who just arrived, right? You're here for the Vamara Village Commission? Yep, sure are. We were just looking into the case. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank goodness you haven't given up. I've been so worried the Adventurers Guild might cancel our commission. My name is Atosa, by the way. I grew up here in Vimara Village. Anyway, I just wanted to say... Please keep searching for a missing villager. I'm begging you. You have to find him. Yeah, 
Yeah, no need to worry. We'll give it our best shot. So, were you close to the missing villager? Are there any leads you can give us? Hmm... I'm not sure this counts as a lead, but follow me. There's a place I'd like to show you. Is this the place? Under this tree? Yep. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is very meaningful to me. It's so full of memories. We used to always sit together under this tree and talk. Sometimes we would look up at the clouds in the sky or stop to feel the wind against our skin. We could sit there for hours at a time, never realizing how long it had been. I was actually adopted by the people of Amar village. The forest rangers found me in the woods as a child. I was surrounded by such good people and growing up in the village was so lively. Still, there were times when I couldn't help but feel incredibly alone. Alone? Uh, how should I put it? When something's bothering you, or when you have good news to share, you always want to talk about it with somebody. But for the longest time, I didn't know who I could talk to, or if I should say anything at all. Everyone has their own problems to deal with. Even if I might want to confide in others, I don't want to become a burden. <laughs> really? You know exactly how I feel? Oh, that sounds really nice. You're quite lucky. When it comes to our missing villager, well... I guess you could say that to me. He felt like both a family member I could rely on and a friend who could really understand me. No matter what came my way, I knew I could always talk to him. He was so thoughtful and pure and patient too. Whenever I talked to him, he would always seem so interested, as if the things I was describing were just as important to him as they were to me. Ever since he disappeared, there's been so much I wanted to tell him. No, no, none of those things matters now. I just really want to see him again. Wow, you two must have been really close. Did he ever tell you anything about himself? Hmm... He mostly just talked about interesting things he saw around the village. He'd share a lot of his own wild ideas as well. Oh, right! I did ask him about his parents once. But all he said was, they're not here anymore. I didn't know whether that meant they had left the village or passed away, and I didn't want to pry. Hmm... Still not much to go off of. Uh, look at me. Talking your ear off and still nothing to show for it. I'm sorry I wasn't more help. The last time I talked this much in one go was when we were still together. Huh, come to think of it, every time we talked it always seemed to be around dusk, just like right now. Time always passed by really slowly. Even when it felt like we'd been talking for hours, the sun would still be at the same position in the sky. Well, time always seems to pass slower when you're relaxed, right? Uh, what's wrong, Traveler? trails over there. Doesn't it seem like they're acting a little strange? Uh, the abyss 
disorder. Could they be the ones behind all of this? Uh-oh, we've been spotted! Quick, get ready to fight! Speed of light! Huh? to show up. If you hadn't been here, I'm not sure what I would have done. It was no trouble. Hmm, now that I think about it, the healing trolls around Vermara village have been a lot more active lately. They seem agitated and would often attack anything in sight. Chief Amadea doesn't allow the children to play in the area around the village anymore. Hmm. Maybe the Abyss Order really is involved. Well, we should head back and check out the situation in Vimara Village just in case. If the Abyss Order is plotting something, that could spell trouble for the villagers. Wait a second. The person... It's... It's Dainsliff! Ah, it's you two. Oh, a friend of yours? Well, I'll leave you all to it then. I should head back to the village and check up on Chief Amadea and the others anyway. Well, see you later! Yep, see you later, Atosa! Why do you always have to pop up out of nowhere like that? Is it your life's mission to jump scare us or something? It's hardly personal, or intentional for that matter. As long as you and I are both in pursuit of the Abyss Order, we're bound to cross paths. Ah, so you're here to investigate the Abyss Order then. That would explain the monsters you were fighting just now. Naturally. Hold on. Are you not here for the same purpose? Hmm. No matter. It may have taken you a while to catch on, but I'm sure you've also realized by now that there's something strange about this place. The Abyss Order is most certainly planning something in this area. Or worse, their plan could already be in motion. So you think the Abyss Order is behind the hilly trail activity in the area? As things stand, I highly doubt that is their primary motive. I would imagine the increased hilly churl activity is merely a byproduct of whatever it is they're really trying to accomplish. Still, the hilly churl activity is causing a lot of problems for the people here. We should stick around for a while and protect the village, don't you think? The best way to protect them is by figuring out what the Abyss Order is truly planning. That is how we prevent further tragedy. And you shall have them. I never intended to hide anything from you. Don't worry. There should be ample time to talk. Ah. 
So that was the commission that brought you here to Vimara Village. Someone who seems to only exist in people's memories. That is indeed quite intriguing. I would agree that it's unlikely you have a simple missing persons case on your hands. However, any possible connection to the Abyss Order is still unclear. It appears all we have by way of clues is increased hilly churl activity, and that is certainly not much to go off of. Right! That mysterious voice she heard in her brother's memory. The one who called himself a sinner. Who is he? Hmm. Traveler, let me ask you this. Do you believe your sibling to have betrayed you? Hmm. I sense hesitation in your words. After all, you still haven't figured out the whole truth of what happened. There's still hope for the two of you to reconcile. Irreparable damage has not yet been done. The sinner you wish to know about... His situation is different. He and his fellow sinners have long betrayed me, and long betrayed their nation. His name is Vedderfulnir, the visionary. I'm loath to admit it, but he is also my kin, my older brother. Your brother? There were five of them, the five sinners of Kanria. The wise, Roptatir. The visionary, Vedderfulnir. Gold, Rhinedaughter. The foul, Sirtalogi. And Rehir of Solnari, Rerir. No matter how eroded my memory may become, I will never forget their names. One day, I shall have my vengeance. Wait, some of those names sound really familiar. Rhinedaughter is the one who created Albedo. Sertologi is Skirk's master. And the one we just learned about, Dane's brother, Vedafolnir. If he was the voice of the sinner, then the one who inspired Clotar to create the Abyss Order was him! They were once people of great esteem in Kanria. Those who carried the hopes of the nation. They were the best of their peers, outstanding in their respective fields. Six of us, together. We should have been the ones to prevent the disaster. The ones to stop the Vinster King from continuing to rock the foundation of the world. Yet, deep within, the five of them craved something more. They could not resist the call of the Abyss, and divided among themselves a power that could destroy the world. So they became sinners, but also transcendent beings, each in possession of world-shattering power. And when the cataclysm occurred, not one of them stood up in defense of their nation. Not one came forward to prevent the tragedy, and for that, they shall never have my forgiveness. Indeed. If they are not stopped, the day is sure to come when they will also betray the entire world. Of course. As I said, I never intended to hide anything from you. So, Dane, what have you been looking into all this time? I've continued to investigate the questions surrounding the Loom of Fate. It's been quite some time since the initial operation was launched. By retrieving the Eye of the First Field Tiller, we were able to stop part of their plan from coming to fruition. Oh, Paimon remembers! Weren't they going to use it to corrupt Osile and make a god or something? Indeed. However, it's obvious that was just some sort of technical experiment. The Eye was integral to their plan, yet somehow, despite failing to obtain it, they've skipped the experimental phase and found some other way to keep moving forward. There are many signs pointing to that effect. Then, what should we do? 
It's not too late, is it? Our most pressing concern is to determine the purpose of the Loom of Fate. From there, we'll be able to deduce the Abyss Order's true objective. Based on the intel I've gathered so far, I suspect the Loom of Fate is related to the Ley Lines in some way. The Ley Lines? Traveler, you were able to observe your siblings' memories last time, yes? I believe that was due to the fact that the ley lines in that area were unstable. My recent investigation has shown that Abyss Order activity in a particular area is usually followed by a series of issues with the ley lines. Wait, then our commission here in Vimara Village, the person who seems to exist only in people's memories, could it be connected? It's certainly possible. I'll join your investigation tomorrow. This missing persons case could very well turn out to be the key to unraveling these mysteries. Well, if we're teaming up with Dane again, we're gonna need all the energy we can get. Let's try investigating somewhere a little further away tomorrow. Yesterday. It's all Dane's fault saying all that complicated stuff. Well, let's go find Dane. We've got a lot to do today. Just a bit of